Well, fit like ladies and gentlemen, loons, quines and everybody else that's watching and Merry Christmas! I've been asked if I would put up a Christmas story um, for everyone that follows me on YouTube. Um, so here it is. This is a story from Russia where at Christmas Santa Claus is known as Grandfather Frost. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there was a young girl who lived with her father. Her mother had died a very long time ago and her father was lonely. So it wasn't much to her surprise that one day when he went to the big town as part of his job, a merchant, he came back not only with goods to sell, but with a rather beautiful looking woman sitting next to him and the front of this horse and cart. It was his new wife. He introduced her to his daughter who was ever so pleased to have a stepmother. And then she looked behind in the cart only to see another girl about the same age as her. Not only have I brought you a mother, he said, I have brought you a sister too. And I'm sure you will all get on so well together. But of course, as you might know, if you've heard a story or two, in stories, stepmothers and stepsisters can be cruel. And as soon as that father went out and about on his business, well, they made her cook. They made her clean from dawn until dusk. Soon all of her nice things were taken away and her clothes were ragged and worn. Whenever her father came back, he was so in love with his wife that he failed to see the change in his daughter. But she kept on smiling because that was the kind of girl that she was. His time away from home became longer and longer as he became more and more successful. And so he was away when that girl woke up one morning and it was her 18th birthday. She came down to get the fire lit and to get breakfast prepared for her stepmother and her stepsister. But they were already sitting at the table. No need for you to cook breakfast today, my dear. No, she said. Is it, is it because it's my birthday? <laughs> yes, child, yes. And I have a surprise for you. Today, you are to leave this house. Leave, she said. The girl didn't get to go anywhere, although her sister was treated to new dresses, gowns, jewels, and nights out on the town. This girl was meant to stay at home. No, she said. Today, you will be going to meet your new husband. My new husband, she said, but I don't even know anyone. Part of her was quite excited at the idea of getting out of the house and meeting people, but to get married to someone she did not know? Soon, a horse and cart arrived at the door and the girl was bundled into it. She had no warm cloak, only a thin shawl. She wore her wooden shoes and her usual thin dress and it was winter and the snow was falling from the sky almost as soon as they left. Where are you taking me? She said to the man. I am to take you up to the top of the mountain. When you get to the top of the mountain there you partly you're going to meet your new husband. Up, up, up and up they went. Soon it was dark and she was almost at the top of the mountain in the darkness with the moon shining up above when they stopped at a clearing and she got out. She was left there alone and cold and she paced back and forth to stay warm. But soon someone came. An old man with his beard long and white came out of the trees and he said to her, young girl, what are you doing here? And she said, you, what are you doing here as well? She said, let me help you. And she took the old man's arm in his hand and she led him out of the woods and onto the path. I'm here to meet my husband, she said. The old man was confused. There is no husband for you here. But I will take you to my home where you will be warm and sheltered for a storm comes tonight with more snow. 
He led her in the direction of his castle. A big, sparkling castle made from ice. She was cold, chinnled to the bone already, but she did not complain when he took her in to the great hall. And the only place for her to sit was a block of ice. Her teeth chattered, but she did not complain. And the old man said to her, I shall get some wood and make you a fire. No, 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 she said. She wouldn't have it. She wouldn't have an old man going outside in the snow to chop wood. And soon... She fell asleep, using his powers, for this was no ordinary old man. He lifted her body, moved her down the corridor and into a room with a large bed with reindeer furs and he tucked her in so she would be warm. Soon there was a knock at the door. It was his grandson. Jack, Jack, come in, said the old man. Come and see what I have found. He showed the girl to Jack, who looked at her beauty and said, she is, she is worn and tired. She has not been cared for, but let me see if she has a good heart. He put his hands over her heart and he smiled and he said, her heart is as warm as the hottest of summer days. I will give her a gift. She was kind to you, was she not? The old man said, yes. And he touched her ears, and there were earrings of diamonds, a necklace of diamonds, a ring of diamonds, and finally a crown to match. The next morning, she woke up in the horse and cart outside her own home. Immediately, the stepmother came out, and she was just waking, but the stepmother grabbed her and said, What are you doing back here? But where did you get those jewels? She sat the girl down at the table and tried to pull them off, but they would not come. They were intended for the good girl. The stepmother had her tell everything, and that very day she sent her own daughter up to see what she could get. The girl was dressed in warm fur boots, woolen clothes and a, a woolen trim to her very, very warm cloak. And she went up the mountain and she did nothing but complain bitterly the whole time. She too was left in the clearing and she stood and she complained and grumbled. And when the old man came out of the woods, she said, where have you been? I have been waiting for you over long. Another girl, he said, how curious. You two are here to meet your husband? <laughs> but come with me, child. I will make sure you have shelter for the night in my castle. He reached out for her hand, thinking she would help him. But as soon as she touched his cold, cold skin, she withdrew her hand and looked at him as if she was disgusted. When they got to the castle and he offered to go chop wood, of course, she said, I'm absolutely frozen. Is there nothing to eat or drink in this place? When she finally fell asleep, the old man lifted her kindly and put her in the warm bed. Again, there was a knock at the door and who should come in but, oh, my grandson, Jack. A strange thing has happened again. Jack was shown the, the girl in the bed and he said, oh, she is beautiful. See how she is dressed. But let me see, how is her heart? And he placed his hands above her heart and he said, Why, her heart is as hard and cold as the most iron of winters. Yet I will give her a gift. But this time, when he touched her ears, there were no diamonds, only slugs. A snail was the decoration for the ring on her finger and a necklace of squirming, twisting worms, while the crown was of toads and rats. The next day she woke up in the carriage outside her own home, a carriage pulled by white horses, clearly owned by the old man, or his grandson, and the mother came rushing out to see what her daughter had got, only to find 
the things, the squirming, wriggling worms, the hopping, jumping toads and rats, and the slugs which could not be pulled from your ears, you should have heard the screams and shouts. She ushered her daughter inside. Soon there was a knock at their door, and the stepmother went to answer it, and standing there was the most beautiful, handsome man. His hair was white. His eyes sparkled blue, and he said, My name is Jack. My grandfather has given me permission to marry, and I would have your daughter for my bride. Oh, yes, said the stepmother, bringing her own daughter through. But it was not her own daughter he wished. He reached for the girl whose heart was as warm as a hot summer's day, and he said, I know you do not know me, but I have need of a wife, and my grandfather has need of an assistant. Will you come with me? And if we like each other, we shall be wed. And that was how it was, and that was how it is. Grandfather Frost travels the world. In Russia, he does not have elves to assist him. He has the Snow Maiden. And of course, she is married to Jack. Jack Frost. And that is the story of the Snow Maiden or Grandfather Frost, as it is known in Russia. I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas and all the best for the new year when it comes. And thank you very much to tuning into this story. Goodbye.